this video we are going to discuss uh, May June 2022 uh, paper 6 for probability and statistics 2 the variance 6 2 okay so we have we can start with question number one okay so there's a, a javelin troller thrower noted the length of a random sample of 50 of the troves the sample mean was 72.3 meter and unbiased estimate of the population variance was 64.3 meter per second, a uh, meter square, sorry. So um, here we are having a sample mean, which is 72.3. And the uh, symbol for this sample mean should be summation, oh, sorry, the X bar. All right, and now our sample size will be 50 for this case. And the unbiased estimate of the population variance is 64.3. So the but uh, we need to find the 92% confidence interval for the population mean length. All right, so 92% confidence interval for the population mean. Alright, so to calculate the probabilities, or oh, sorry, to calculate the 92% confidence interval, generally we should use the formula where we are having sample mean minus the z multiplied with sigma over square root n. So the upper limit for the confidence interval will be some sample mean plus z multiplied with sigma over square root n. All right. So we generally we are having all the values here. Okay. So we already have the sample mean, we have the sigma, we have the sample size, and now we have to try to find the value of z. Okay. For ninety two percent confidence interval. All right. So for confidence interval, generally what we have is we are having the center, which is 92%. And the two area by the side should be symmetric. And each side will be 0 0.04, and this side will be 0 0.04 as well. We are going to get the value for z, okay, for this part. All right, so to get the value for z for this part, generally, we should refer to the area, which is smaller than z. So the whole area which is smaller than z is actually 0 0.96. So we should look for 0 0.96 and the probability 0 0.96 to get the value for z. Alright, so let's have a look for the normal distribution table. So just to recall back, uh, we need to look for the probability 0 0.96 to get the value of z. So we should look for a value from the probability part which is very close to 0 0.96 but smaller than that. So very close to 0 0.96 but smaller than that should be 0 0.9599. And then you need to add a 1 at the last digit here to get 0 0.96. So according to what all the values that we get here, it should be 1.751. And 1. So the value of z should be 1.751. So z should be equal to 1.751 and I will need to put this value of z into my formula for the confidence interval. Alright, so now let us input all the values that we have here. We are having 72.3 minus 1.751 multiply with sigma. So the sigma should be square root of 64.3 divided by square root n which is square, uh, square root 50. Alright, so the same thing happened for the upper limit, but we're having a plus. So 1.751 square root 64.3 divided by 50 as well. Okay, so after pressing calculator, we should get a very long value. And our final answer, we can cut it short into three significant figure, where it should be 70.3 and also 74.3. Right, so this is uh, the 92% confidence interval for the population mean for this question. Right, okay, then now we continue to part B. Okay, so uh, a discussed thrower wish to calculate a 92% confidence interval also for the population mean of his throw. So he bases his calculation on the first 50 throws in a week. So first 50 throws. All right, so he's using uh, the sample, lah, okay, the first pretty throws in the week. So they want us to comment on this method. Alright, so generally when we take only the first pretty throws in the week, right, 
this is actually not a random sample. All right, so to get a random sample, it should be picked randomly, okay, from time to time, but it shouldn't be the first 50 throws in a week. All right, so you can comment on this by using some simple words, okay, saying that uh, the first 50 throws in a week is actually not a random sample. So it's not a random sample. Okay, so this is what we have for question number one. Question number two. Uh, in the past, the mean height of plants of a particular species has been 2.3 meter. And then there's a random sample of 60 plants of this species were treated with fertilizer and the mean height of these 60 plants was found to be 2.4. Alright, so we are having the mean height of the 60 plants is 2.4. So for this case, right, generally the 2.4 refer to the mean for the 60 plants. So it should be a sample mean. So sample mean, we should denote it by using the sample, uh, the X bar. Alright. Okay, so assume that the standard deviation of the heights of plants treated with fertilizer is 0 0.4. So we are having the standard deviation. Okay, they want us to carry out a test at 2.5 significance level, whether the mean height of plants treated with fertilizer is greater than 2.3 meter or not. Alright, so the keyword here is greater, greater than. Alright, so the word greater than will actually help us to form the alternative hypothesis. Okay, alright, so to carry out the test, generally, um, you can have a look that we are having a sample size which is large, it is n. Alright, so when the sample size is large, and then according to the central limit theorem, generally we should uh, assume that the sampling distribution is approximately normal. So we can carry out the test by using normal distribution. Alright, so to carry out the test by using the normal distribution, generally there are a few things that we need to identify. So the 2.3 here will be treated as a population mean. Okay, so we have the sample mean, we have the sample size, and now we are having this 0 0.4. Generally, this 0 0.4 refer to the sample, sorry, refer to the population standard deviation, which is sigma. Okay, so if you try to read the question again, you can see that assume that the standard deviation of the heights of plant treated with fertilizer is 0 0.4. So this 0 0.4 is for the standard deviation for the plants treated with fertilizer. The whole, all the plants treated with fertilizer, the standard deviation is 0 0.4. So we will treat it as a population standard deviation, where this case is population standard deviation known, is known. All right. So some of the students might actually um, misinterpret the question where they were thought that this is a sample standard deviation and they will want to find out the unbiased estimated population variance or population standard deviation okay generally we no need to find out the or to calculate uh, the unbiased estimated for the population variance it is because of for this particular question they are referring to the plants all the plants treated with fertilizer which is the whole population if it is a sample stem sample standard deviation then generally there should be some word missing here if they are mentioning that we are having the height of these 60 plants okay if they are writing out these 60 plants treated with fertilizer is 0 0.4 uh, for this case it is actually the sample standard deviation and we need to calculate the unbiased estimated population variance or standard deviation to continue with the test all right, so because of these words are not existing here, does not exist here, therefore we will treat this as actually the whole population, okay, the standard deviation for the whole population that treated with the fertilizer plants. Okay, all right, so this is a population standard deviation. We have the sample size, we have population mean, and we also have the sample mean. All right, so from here, we have everything. We can start to carry out the test. Alright, so first of all, first step, we should try to write out the null hypothesis and also the alternative hypothesis. Alright, so for null hypothesis, the mu, the population mean should be equal to 2.3 meter. And we are going to test whether the height of plant treated with fertilizer is greater than 2.3.
So greater than 2.3 means that we are going to test whether the sample mean, oh, sorry, the population mean is more than 2.3 meter or not. So the keyword greater than give us this symbol greater than 2.3 meter. So this is the first step. Second step, we need to carry out the test by using the normal distribution because according to central limit theorem, when the sample size is large, okay, the sampling distribution should be approximately normal, right? So we are going to carry out the test by using normal distribution. Okay, so before I carry out the test, I will want to draw a diagram, a normal distribution diagram, and I want to define where is my rejection region. So I'm having alternative hypothesis greater than, therefore my I'm having one tail test, and the rejection region is on the right hand side. So at the end of the right hand side here, this is my rejection region. And how big is my rejection region? It should be 0 0.025. Which means that this acceptance region will be 0 0.975. All right. Okay. So we have uh, different methods uh, to carry out the test. You can try to find out the critical value where this is actually the critical value according to our diagram. So I want to find out the critical value now. I'm using critical value approach. All right. Okay, so to get the critical value, I need to look for the area, which is 0 0.975, to get the critical value, which is a Z, all right? So 0 0.975. Okay, so we can actually try to um, use the shortcut formula, the shorter formula, because you can see that there's an area 0 0.975, and the Z value should be equal to 1.96. So coming to our question, Our critical value is on the right hand side, right? It should be a positive value, which is 1.96. All right, so first step, we form alternative and null hypothesis. The second step, we try to find out the critical value. And the third step, we are going to calculate the test statistic. To get the test statistic, the formula is actually the formula of uh, standardizing the sample mean. All right, so it should be sample mean, which is 2.4 minus the population mean, minus 2.3 divided by standard deviation, which is 0 0.4 over square root n, so over square root 60. And from here, I get my test statistic, which is equals to 1.936. And I'm going to now try to conclude, make a conclusion. All right, so I'm looking going to compare my test statistic with my critical value. So you can see that my test statistic is 1.936, where it should be a value smaller than critical value 1.96. So that means if I want to draw a line on the diagram, right, that represent the test statistic, this one should be the test statistic 1.936. Okay, so before you can make any conclusion, you can refer to this diagram. You can see that the 1.936, uh, the test statistic, actually falls under the acceptance region. The shaded area will be the rejection region. Therefore, if you can see the 1.936 falls under the acceptance region. All right, so we can make a simple conclusion on this where uh, the, reason, uh, the reason is because I realized that the test statistic, which is 1.936, is smaller than the critical value in this case, which is 1.96. So for me personally, I, I'm actually mainly look at the diagram. All right, so I know that this test statistics fall under the acceptance region. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So our conclusion is do not reject null hypothesis. Okay, so when we do not reject the null hypothesis, we need to make a conclusion in the a context of the question. All right, so when we do not reject null hypothesis, means that uh, the mean height uh, for the plants that are treated by the fertilizer actually is not more than 2.3, right? So you can make a conclusion using your own sentence that show that meaning, all right? So for me, I'm writing out like this, there's no enough evidence Mm, to show that 
the mean height of plants treated with fertilizer is greater than 2.3. Right, so this is how we carry out the test for this question. Okay, so we come to question number three. It is known that 1.8% of the children in a certain country have not been vaccinated against uh, measles. Uh, there's a random sample of 200 children in this country is chosen. Right, so you use a suitable approximating distribution to find the probability that there are fewer than three children in the sample who have not been vaccinated against the measles. Alright, so for this question, they give us a very um, obvious keyword where we have to use a suitable approximating distribution. Generally, at first, now we are having the sample size, which is 200, and then we are having a proportion, which is 1.8%. So to identify the original distribution, it should be binomial distribution, where I'm having 200 as a sample size, which is the N, and also a proportion, which is 0 0.018, which is the P. All right, so when the N is large and the MP is smaller than 5, we can try to change the binomial become Poisson distribution. All right, so you can double check the condition ourselves. Lah. So N must be greater than 50, that's the first thing. And secondly, you take N multiply with P. If it gets smaller than 5, then you can change binomial become Poisson. Right, so to get the mean for poison, I'm taking N multiply with P, which is equal to 3.6. So the lambda for our poison is 3.6 for this case. Okay, and now we are going to calculate the probability that fewer than three children in the sample have not been vaccinated against measles. So we are going to get a probability for X smaller than three. Since we are using Poisson distribution now, therefore our formula should be Poisson formula. So E negative lambda, when x equals to 0, the value should be a 1. When x equals to 1, it should be a lambda. When x equals to 2, it should be lambda square divided by 2 factorial. And from here, the answer for this probability should be 0 0.303, correct to 3 significant figure. Okay, then continue to part B. Alright, so they want us to justify the approximating distribution. So what are the conditions that uh, we can change binomial become Poisson? So there are two important conditions here. The first one must be n greater than 50. And we are having n equals to 200 in our, uh, in our question here, right? So we already get this condition correct. And also mp smaller than 5. So if you double check uh, our lambda just now for poison, okay, or the value for n times p is 3.6, where also fulfill the condition. So these two are the conditions that we can change binomial become poison distribution. Question number four. Uh, we have the number of cars arriving at a certain road junction on a weekday morning has a poison distribution. So this is a keyword. Okay, with the mean 4.6 per minute. All right, so this might be our lambda for one minute. The traffic lights are installed at the junction and the council officer uh, wish to test at 2% significance level whether there are now fewer cars arriving. So these fewer cars, the keyword here, help us to form the alternative hypothesis. He notes the number of cars arriving during a randomly chosen two-minute period. So, um... The number of cars that we observe, right, is for two minute period. The lambda that we have is for one minute, all right? So state suitable now and alternative hypothesis for the test. All right, so we're having the now hypothesis and we have the alternative hypothesis where the now hypothesis should be uh, lambda equals to 9.2, okay, for two minute period.
right? And then we are looking for fewer cars arriving. Therefore, we are observe, we are going to get the alternative hypothesis where lambda should be more sorry nine, uh, less than nine point two fewer than so less than nine point two for two minute period. All right. Generally, if you write out lambda equals to four point six for one minute and also lambda smaller than 4.6 for 1 minute, also acceptable for Poisson distribution. Okay, so this is what we have for the first part. And then now we go to part number B. Okay, so for part B, they want us to find the critical region for the test. So we want to get the rejection region. Before we get the rejection region, we have to take note that the significance level is 2%. Alright, so anything more than 2% will be under the <coughs> acceptance region. Okay, so let us start. For this question, because our alternative hypothesis is on the left, it's one, one tail test, uh, alright, and then the area is, uh, the direction is on the left, smaller than. Okay, therefore, our critical region or rejection region should be on the left as well. Okay, so for the value at the left, uh, you can start from x smaller equals to 0, then x smaller equals to 1, and so on. Okay, so maybe we can try, by try and error, like you can try first. So you can start from a small value. Usually I will skip x smaller equals to 0. Maybe I will try to get x smaller equals to 1 first. If I try to get x smaller equals to 1, right? Because for this question, it is Poisson distributed with the lambda 9.2. So when x smaller equals to 1, the probability will be E negative lambda. When x equals to 0, the value is a 1. When x equals to 1, it should be lambda, which is 9.2. So if I try to calculate the probability for this question, I'm having 0 0.00103. And if I compare it with my significance or rejection region, it is still smaller than the area or the rejection region, which is 0 0.02. All right. So we have to continue to calculate the probability for the critical region until we get the probability which is greater than 0 0.02, then only we can stop. Alright, so since x smaller equals to 1, still uh, the p-value is smaller than 0 0.02, we call this as p-value, alright? So you can still continue, or we will call it as probability. You can continue with x smaller equals to 2. Okay, but I know that this value itself is actually uh, quite far away from 0 0.02. Therefore, I will skip the value 2. I'm quite confident that when x smaller equals to 2, right, the answer that I get, it is still smaller than 0 0.02. So I can skip and try to get x smaller equals to 3. So to get x smaller equals to 3, the formula will be E negative lambda 1 plus lambda plus lambda square plus lambda cube because we are going to calculate the probability until x equals uh, x smaller equals to 3. Okay, so for this particular value, I'm getting 0 0.0184 and if I try to compare it with the rejection region again, it is still smaller than 0 0.02. Okay, so I will continue the calculation for x smaller equals to 4. Alright, so for x smaller equals to 4, I, I, I will not skip any value anymore. 3 then followed by 4 because I, I know that this particular probability is very, very close to 0 0.02 already. Alright, so I will just try to calculate the value, the probability for x smaller equals to 4. So E negative lambda. 1 plus lambda plus lambda square over 2 factorial lambda cube over 3 factorial and we want to include lambda power 4 divided by 4 factorial. Okay, so for this particular probability, if I try to get a value, it should be 0 0.0486, which is uh, quite obvious, it is more than 0 0.02. So that means that once we get the value where it is more than the rejection region or the significance level, then we can stop. All right, so what does all the calculation here means? So for the calculation here, generally it's like this. Assume that we are having okay, x 
from 0 until infinity for Poisson distribution and our rejection region, this particular area is 0 0.02. Uh, uh, 0 0.02, yes. Okay, so we try to calculate all the probability, right? For x smaller than 1, the 1 is inside the rejection region. Then when you calculate for x smaller equals to 3, it is still inside the rejection region, which is smaller than 0 0.02. Lah. All right, and when you are having x smaller equals to 4, right? We realize that eh, it is already more than 0 0.02, which means that the 4 should be somewhere here. So from here, very obvious, you can see that what are the value of x that lies in the rejection region? 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you can see that 4 is already outside the rejection region. Therefore, we can make a conclusion here where the critical region for this case should be equals to x smaller equals to 3. Right, so this is how we try to get the critical region or rejection region. All right, so let's proceed to next part, part C. Okay, so for part C, they are saying that the officer notes that during a randomly two-minute period in a weekly uh, in a weekday morning, exactly five cars arrive at the junctions. So exactly five cars. The five cars here actually tell us that this is observed value. Okay, so for the observed value that we get, we get a five. And they want us to use this five to carry out the test. All right, so you can try to think about the five, the number five, is it under the rejection region or not? So our rejection region is x smaller equals to three but the 5 is outside the rejection region, right? Okay, so from here, we can actually straight away to make a conclusion. All right, so of course, you should tell them the reason. Okay, so when x is equal to 5, uh, we realize that it is not in the critical region. That means it is in the acceptance region. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Alright, so what is the conclusion for this test? So there's no enough evidence. To show that. Fewer cars arriving at the junction okay, after the traffic uh, lights are installed. Alright, so this is how we carry out the test uh, by comparing the observed value with the critical region. Okay, so this is part C. And now let's proceed to part D. For part D, they are asking, uh, state with a reason whether it is possible that the type 1 error has been made in carrying out the test in part C. So what is the meaning for type 1 error? So type 1 error means that we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so the main thing is about reject the null hypothesis. And according to the re, uh, to the result that we have just now for the test, uh, we are having do not reject the null hypothesis. So generally, you can see that we are not making the conclusion that we reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, it is impossible for us to have a type 1 error. Alright, so you can write that we will not make the type 1 error because we do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, All right, so continue with the next part, part E. Okay, so now they are talking about the number of cars arriving another junction on a weekday, eh? also have a Poisson distribution. 
okay, with the mean 4.6 per minute using a suitable approximating distribution. So again, you can see this important keyword here, suitable approximating distribution to find the probability that more than 300 cars okay, will arrive at this junction in an hour. So now you can see that the interval that we are interested in already changed. Just now we have the mean for one minute and now we are going to calculate the probability for one hour. All right. Okay. And they already tell us a very obvious hint here where we should use a suitable approximating distribution. All right. So originally I'm having poison. The mean for poison is uh, 4.6 per minute. And now I'm interesting, interested for one hour, which means that my lambda should take 4.6 multiplied with 60. One hour, we have 60 minutes, right? So we have to multiply with 60 and we get 276. And because the lambda is more than 15, when the lambda is large, more than 15, we can change poison become normal distribution. So the mean for poison is 276. Huh? Okay, and then what is the variance for poison? When you want to put the parameter in normal distribution, so this is variance. Variance for poison and mean huh, should be the same, which is 276. Okay, and when you are changing from poison become normal distribution, right? So please take note that poison is discrete random variable. And normal is continuous random variable. So to calculate the probability, uh, the continuity correction is needed. Right. Okay, so we want to calculate the probability for x greater than 300. More than, so more than there's no equal sign. So first step, we have to, con uh, we have to adjust, okay, we made the adjustment from discrete to continuous random variable, which is the continuity correction. So for 300, it should be uh, more than 300.5. <laughs> and you should change it become Z. Standardize it. Uh. So 300.5 minus the mean. So minus 276 divided by standard deviation. So the standard deviation will be square root of 276. Okay, so we try to get the Z value. Okay, the exact value for this case should be 1.475. And then for the area Z greater than 1.475, right? We should take 1 minus the area that we get from the normal table. So 1.475, what is the area that we get for 1.475? Okay, so we can have a look here. 1.47 and you actually get this value, 1.47. You get 9292 and then 5, 1.475. So for the 5 here, we need to add the 7. So we add the 7 at the last digit for 9292 and we get 9299. So for our steps here, we will put in the value where it should be 1 minus 0 0.9299. So this is the value that we get it from the normal distribution table. And after that, we will get the answer where it should be 0 0.0701. So this is our question number four. Okay, question number five. We have a random variable x uh, has the PDF given by this function and the domain defined is from two until four for the value of x. Okay, so they want us to show that the expected value for x is uh, 11 over four. Okay, so first to get the expected value of variable x, generally we have to integrate the function Okay, from the domain defined, where it is from 2 until 4. And then you have to take, multiply the x with the function before we can integrate it. Alright, so you can see that you multiply the x with the function. 
So the, uh, why you multiply the x eh? because of the expected value of the x. Eh? So if expected value for x square, then you have to multiply the x square. Okay, with the function, then only you get the expected value for x square. Right, so for this case, to ease the process of integration, I will take out the constant, which is 3 over 16. And I try to multiply in the x into the function. And then I can start integrating. So I'm having 3 over 16. And I'm having 4x power 3, power plus 1, divided by the new power. Power plus 1 become 4, divided by the new power as well. And I'm having 4 and 2. Okay, so first we substitute the value 4 into the equation or into the expression. I'm having 256 over 3. Substitute 4 here, I will have 256 over 3. Substitute 4 here, I'm getting 256 over 4. After that, I substitute 2. So substitute 2, the first term, I'm having 32 over 3. Substitute 2 here, I'm getting negative 4. Alright, so just double check by pressing calculator and we should get the answer 11 over 4, which is something that they want us to prove. Okay, and now we can proceed to part B. Right, so for part B, they want us to find the variance of x. So usually for me, before I want to find the variance of x, huh, I will need to find the expected value of x squared first. So again, we have to integrate the domain defined, multiply the x squared with the function. So it will be 3 over 16, and then 4x minus x power 2. Okay, so again, before the integration, I will take out all the constant first, and I multiply in the x squared with the remaining function. This is what I have. Okay, and now we will start the integration. So integrate this one, power plus 1 divided by the new power, eventually I'm getting x power 4. For this part, I'm having power plus 1 become x power 5 divided by the new power. And I'm having 4, 2. Right? Then I try to put in a 3 over 16. Okay, so put in a limit 4 into the term here. I'm having 256 minus 1024 over 5. Substitute 2 into the expression. I'm having 16 minus 32 over 5. Okay, so let's try to simplify. I'm having 39 over 5. Okay, so please take note that this is only the value for expected value of x squared. La. This is not the variance yet. So to get the variance, generally the formula will be expected value for x squared minus the mean squared. So the mean value that we calculate just now is 11 over 4 and then we square it. Okay, so for this question, the variance x that we get is <coughs> 19 over 80. If we didn't do any careless mistake. Okay, so this is how we complete part B. And let's proceed to part C now. Okay, so for part C, they want us to calculate a probability for this. Alright, and they please take note that the m is actually median of x. Ah. And they want us to find the probability for x between the m, between the median and also the trade. Okay, so please take note that no matter how our graph looks like, because we are having continuous random variable, right? So our graph should be continuous. Alright, so no matter how it looks like, maybe our graph looks something like this. Let's say this is a 2 and this is a 4. This is where our function defined, let's say. Okay. And uh, we are having median in front of the tree. So let's say my tree is here. And let's say, uh, let's say median is here. So we want to find this, uh, this area. To find this area, we can actually take the area that x is smaller than 3. So x is smaller than 3 means this whole part. Okay. Then minus 
the area for x smaller than m. So x smaller than m means this part. So you can say x smaller than 3 minus x smaller than m, I'll get the shaded area that I want. Alright, so generally this is how we should try to solve it. Okay, so I write out the formula in general first. So to find the probability for x between median and also 3, I should I can use the concept of x smaller than 3 minus the probability of x smaller than median. To get the probability x smaller than 3, integration is needed where I need to integrate from 2, the lowest limit, until the value that I want. So integrate from 2 until 3 for the function that I have. So 3 over 16 and then for x minus x squared. Okay, then minus the area for x more than median. So for what we know, right, median is actually the center of the whole set of data. It covers the 50% okay, of the uh, data from first from beginning and also from the end. Alright, so the probability for x more than 5, uh, sorry, for x more than median, uh, it should be 0 0.5. Okay, so we actually have to complete this part by applying the integration. Okay, so again, I take out the 3 over 16 as a constant and I start the integration for this part. So integrate this, I'm having 2x squared. Integrate this, I'm having x power 3 divided by 3. And the limit is 3 and 2 minus 0 0.5. Okay, so if I try to put in all the limit, okay, so put in the 3, I'm having 18 minus 9. Put in the 2, I'm having 8 minus 8 over 3. And this whole thing, I have to minus 0 0.5 to get my final probability answer. Therefore, I will get 3 over 16 okay, as my final answer, as a probability for x between the median and also the 3. Okay, so this is how we um, solve question number 5. Question 6. Okay, uh, we have the masses in kilogram for large and small sacks of grain have the distribution. Okay, so we are having the large one, which is N, 53 and 11. Then the small one is N, 14 and 3. Okay, so maybe for me, I will denote uh, the large sacks by using L and then the small one by using the S. Okay. So first, they want us to find the probability that the mass of a randomly chosen large sack is greater than four times the mass of a randomly chosen small sack. All right, so the keyword here is greater than, and after that, we see the keyword four times. So the four times here actually tell us about the multiple, which means that we're having L greater than 4S, 4 multiplied with S. And when we're having this one, this symbol, right, we're not able to calculate the probability. We have to change all the variable to one side where it should become L minus 4S, which is greater than 0. So we need to try to calculate the mean and also the variance for the variable L minus 4S first. Okay, before we can continue with the calculation for the probability. All right. So because the 4 is 4 times uh, is a multiple, therefore when you want to calculate the variance later, right, we have to square the 4. Okay, so let us start. I'm going to get the variable for the, the distribution of for L minus 4S. L is normally distributed. The S is also normally distributed. Therefore, the linear combination uh, for this variable will be also normally distributed. Okay, all right, so to calculate the mean, okay, first value here in the parameter, right, the first parameter in the normal distribution should be the mean. So to calculate the mean, it should be mean L, mean L is 53, minus 4 times, so 4, the uh, mean of small, so the small one is 14. Okay, so L minus 4S, the mean L minus 4 times of the mean S, and I will get negative 3. Okay, 
And then now, if we want to calculate the variance, so for variance, right, we'll take the variance for L, which is 11. Okay, then please take note that we have a plus, not minus. Huh? For variance, we should always plus them together, add them together. All right, and then for the 4, because this is a multiple, right? So you want to calculate the variance, we should square the 4. This is a multiple variable, so you have to square the 4. And then I multiply it with 3. Okay, so this is a variance for large, uh, large set. Plus 4 square of the variance for the small one. Okay, and from here, we will get 59 as the variance. And now we will start with the calculation for the probability. So for this calculation for probability, right, originally we are looking for L greater than 4S. And we have to move all the variable to one side. It becomes L minus 4S, which is greater than 0. Since we know that L minus 4S is normally distributed, therefore we can change it become Z and we have to standardize it, right? So 0 minus the mean. The mean that we calculate just now is negative 3 divided by standard deviation. So the standard deviation will be square root of 59. Okay. And the value of Z that I get is 0 0.391 okay to get the area z greater than 0 0.391 i have to take one minus the value that i get from the normal table so i look for 0 0.391 at the value of z 0 0.391 okay so this is 0 0.39 one so you have to add the 4 at the last digit of this one, 6517 plus 4. 6517 plus 4 will get 0 0.6521. Okay, and from here, if you take 1 minus, you should get 0 0.3479. And of course, we will change to become 3 significant figure where it should be 0 0.348. Okay, so this is how we solve the part A for question number 6. Okay, so let's proceed to part B. Okay, so for part B, this question, they are saying that the leaf uh, can safely carry a maximum mass of 1,000 kg. And then they want to find the probability that the leaf can safely carry 12 randomly chosen large sacks and also 25 randomly chosen small small sacks. Okay, so 12 and 25. Alright, so we are having 12 large and 25 small. Generally, these are total. They are not multiple. They should be a total. Okay, so uh, you can write out the symbol by using 12 L plus 25s but please think know that all these are not multiple they are total that means you're having l1 plus l2 plus l3 plus l4 under l12 same thing happened for the 25 here okay all right so because l and s are both normally distributed and this is the linear combination for that for normal therefore they are also normal so to calculate the mean for 12 l plus 25s this should be 12 Multiply with uh, the mean for the large one, which is 53. Okay, and then plus the 25, multiply with the mean for the small, small sex, right? Okay, so you should have 25. Multiply with the mean. For the small one, uh, which is 14. So 12 multiplied with the large mean, okay, plus 25 multiplied with the small mean. And the value that we get for this one should be 2 or uh, 986, if I'm not mistaken. 
Okay, it should be 986. Correct. This is the mean. And for the variance, you should take 12. So please take note that there's no square here for the 12. It is because of this is total. They are not the multiple. Like just now, we have the keyword four times, where four times tell us about the multiple of the variable. Lah. All right, so we are having this one, which is the total for 12 large packs and also the 25 small packs. Lah. So they are total, they are not multiple. Therefore, there's no square when you want to calculate the variance. All right, so we are having 12. What is the... Uh, Variance for the large one, it should be 11 plus 25. The variance for the small one, which is the 3. Okay, so by adding them together, uh, let me calculate that. You should have 207, 207 for the variance. Okay. So once we find out the mean and also the variance for this random variable already, for this linear variable, therefore we can start calculating the probability. So they say that the leaf can safely carry, which means uh, the total weight and everything, right, should be less than the 1,000 kilogram, okay, because it is still safer, okay, for the leaf to carry the all these eggs, right. Alright, so now we know that this is normally distributed, right? So we have to change it become z where we standardize it. So we take the value of x minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So 207 square root. And for this part, the value of z that I get should be z smaller than 0 0.973. And we can get the area or the probability directly from the table. So 0 0.973. Let's have a look for 0 0.973. We're having 0 0.97. And the value that we should look for is this one. 8340. And then you add an 8 unit at the last digit here. So 8340 plus 8. You'll get 8348. So you write the answer here, 0 0.8348. And again, I will want to correct my answer into three significant figures where it should be 0 0.835. Okay, so this is how we um, complete question number six. Okay, so um, now we get we are at question number seven. All right, so x is a random variable with Poisson distributed. Okay, the mean is two point nine. That's a random sample of one hundred values of x is taken. All right, so we can see that this is a sam large sample size. Okay, this is a large sample size, and then uh, find the probability that the sample mean is less than two point eight. So the keyword here is actually sample mean. So we are going to do the sampling distribution for Poisson from Poisson. Okay, all right. So now let us start. Uh. Um, because of the sample size is large, all right? The sample size is large, which is 100. So according to uh, the central limit theorem, right? Our sampling distribution is also approximately normal. Or, although the original distribution is Poisson, because of the large sample and also due to the central limit theorem, our sampling distribution should be approximately normal. Okay, so we are having original distribution which is Poisson and it is 2.9. So we should take note that for this 2.9, right, it is actually the mean, the variance for the x is also 2.9. And now we are going to make it into the sampling distribution and we know that it is normally distributed. Right, so the first parameter value here we should put mean. So the mean from Poisson is 2.9, and then we have to put the variance here. So the variance for the sample mean is original variance, which is 2.9, the population variance divided by the sample size. So the sample size is 100 here. Okay, so our variance uh, it should be 2.9 over 100. You can keep it in fraction or you can change it become decimal numbers. All right, the original decimal numbers, which is 0 0.00290. All right, 
So for this question, we are going to calculate the probability that the sample mean, sample mean means x bar less than 2.8. So the keyword less than 2.8 means smaller than 2.88. Okay, so um, we are having Poisson, which is discrete random variable, and we are changing it into normal distribution, All right, which is a continuous random variable. So by right, uh, suppose uh, we should have the um, continuity correction. Uh, all right, but from population to sampling distribution, right, the continuity correction uh, is not plus and minus 0 0.5, but it is actually plus minus 1 over 2n where the n is the sample size. Uh, all right, due to the value uh, for this one is super small or it is small and it is okay for us to ignore this one. But of course, if you want to apply continuity correction, also can. All right, but because of we are assuming that the value is big, okay, the random sample is large. Therefore, when n is big, you can see that this value is super small and you can actually try to ignore it, all right? So for my solution here, I didn't include the continuity correction. All right, so which means that you can straight away change it become z, and we're having x minus the mean divided by standard deviation over square root n. So we're having square root of 2.90 divided by 100. Okay, so we try to get the value of z, it should be smaller than negative 0 0.117. And then this area is equals to the area of z greater than 0 0.117. And you should take 1 minus the value that we get uh, from the table, which is smaller than 0 0.117. So again, we look from the table 0 0.11, then 7 is this one. Okay, so you take 5438 plus 28. Okay, so 5438 plus 28, you'll get 0 0.5466. And try to simplify the answer is four, sorry, 4534. Or you should actually change it become three significant figure. It should be 0 0.453. Okay, so this is generally the answer which is without the continuity correction. Okay, and please take note that for the marking scheme, they actually also accept the answer where we apply the continuity correction for this question. All right, so if you're interested to know, maybe you can refer to the marking scheme. Okay, all right, so uh, here we ended the discussion okay, for the paper 6-2 from May, June 2022. Alright, so thank you very much for watching. Bye.